Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the April 2nd, 2018 regular meeting of the Milford Board of Aldermen. Please join me. Madam Secretary, will you please take the roll? Alderman Anderson. Present. Alderman Beatty? Present. Alderman Fortunati? Present. Alderman Gaynor? Here. Alderman Gurman? Here. Alderman Genitasio? Here. Alderman Golden? That's me. She's still here. Alderman Grant? Here. Alderman Hardiman? Okay. Alderman Smith? Here. Alderman Sutton? Here. Alderman Tranquilli? Here. Alderman Vecarelli? Here. Alderman Vitro? Present. Alderman Vitale? Here. 13 present, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We do have a quorum. At this time, the mayor has a presentation. Mr. Mayor? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I have a special announcement. I would like to invite the 2017-18 Joseph A. Foreign High School wrestling team, state class M champions, up to the, the front of the auditorium. This is a mighty group. Uh, there are individuals, there are organizations and team that bring great pride to this community and the Joseph A. Foreign High School wrestling team is one of those. So in honor and recognition of their achievement, I do have an official proclamation on behalf of the city of Milford, which reads, whereas the Joseph A. Foreign High School wrestling team is the 2018 Class M state champion, and whereas the wrestling team season record was 28 and eight, after winning the Class M State Championship, the team placed eighth at the State Open. Senior Captain Ryan Luth won the SEC Championship and was named SEC Wrestler of the Year. He also won championships for the Class M State, the State Open, the New England, and placed at Nationals. Senior Captain Kwasim Khan won runner-up for both the SEC and the Class M, as well as placing fourth at the State Open. There were also 10 additional team members who placed in their individual weight classes at the Class M Championship. Michael Giordano, Will Morrow, each placed third. KJ Pakanowski, uh, Umar Khan, William Ives, and Nolan Bannon each placed fourth. Jordan Lang and Ethan Edmondson placed fifth. And Philip Boyles and Ron Gall placed sixth. And whereas wrestlers, coaches, students, parents, and supporters have all come together and making a truly successful team. Team captains Ron Gall, Kwasim Khan, Ryan Luth, and Will Morrow. Team members, Maxim Babazan, uh, Zach Cornell, uh, Michael Reese, Luke Alfano, Nolan Bannon, Aiden Bradley, Pat Brogan, James Carlson, Mark Fitzgerald, Tim Fitzgerald, Mike Giordano, Eric Hallstrom, Gabriel Herrera, Billy Ives, Umar Khan, Jordan Lang, Mike Melillo, Jake Miranda, Damian O'Connor, KJ Pakanowski, uh, Tyler Stanko, Sam Stigbido, Riley Berry, Philip Boyle, Boyles, Anthony DiPietro, David Dong, Ryan Jordan, uh, Tanish Joshi, Jagger Khan, Teddy Morrow, Sam Poffenberger, Max Kiras, Pat Riskansky, Chris 
Kapamoa, uh, Ethan Edmondson, Jesse Figueredo, and I apologize for some of the mispronunciations, <laughs> Jacob Papazugo, James Riley, Brian Thompson, and team managers Dan Edmondson and Natalie Hubler, together with head coach Dave Esposito and assistant coaches Noel Luth and Frank Peters, put together a winning combination through hard work, long hours of practice, mutual support, and commitment. And whereas recognition and celebration of the Joseph A. Foreign High wrestling team serves to bring our community together as we honor them for a phenomenal season. Now, therefore, I, Benjamin Blake, Mayor of the City of Milford, on behalf of all of our citizens, do hereby proclaim today, April 2nd, 2018, as Joseph A. Foreign High School Wrestling Day in the City of Milford. Congratulations. Well done. And if I could invite Coach Esposito up. Coach, two championships in three years, not bad. Well done. You sure? Yeah, we'd just like to thank everyone from the city, Mayor Blake, everybody who supported us. Um, you know, this means a lot uh, to recognize the kids for the hard work. This is not a sport where um, a lot of people know about the sport, where they don't get a lot of um, recognition. Um, and so when you all do this, it really means a lot to us. So I appreciate you taking your time and honoring us tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018 state champs, four and high. The next portion of the meeting is devoted to public comment. Statements are limited to the legislative function of the Board of Aldermen. The time limit granted to each speaker shall be three minutes. 
Residents, taxpayers, and electors may address the board at this time. The board encourages speakers not to express derogatory, insensitive, or offensive statements or to engage in personal attacks against individuals. In order to allow everyone an opportunity to speak, I'd ask that everyone please limit their comments to three minutes. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so at this time. Please state your name, address for the record. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Alan Wilcox, 11 Old J Terrace in Milford. I'm here as president and on behalf of the Milford Land Conservation Trust. The Land Trust and the city have always enjoyed a good, rep good relationship. And in an effort to uh, continue this relationship, the, our board of directors decided that we would honor the city mayor with a lifetime honorary membership. Mayor Blake, who's the city mayor, is the first recipient of this award. Would you step forward? Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the board can do so at this time. Seeing none, Alderman Vecarelli, agenda item number three, consideration of minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen held on March 5th, 2018. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number four, we do not have a special organization meeting to consider. Under Chairman's report, I just hope that everyone had a happy Easter and a happy Passover. Everyone enjoyed themselves. It was a beautiful day, except for today. But uh, we're gonna move on to the agenda item number six. Mayor's report and recommendations. Is there a report from the mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to wish you a happy spring, despite the fact that we are still shoveling out and plowing out from today's snowstorm. Um, I would also like to wish Alderman Fortunati a happy birthday. And thank you. And I respectfully request your consideration and action on those items listed in the agenda 8A through 8H. I'm sorry, 8F. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'd also like to wish Joanne, our city clerk, a happy birthday as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Alderman Connie Gaynor as well. A lot of birthdays. We have a busy uh, panel up here. 
Well, they don't, they're not busy. Their parents were busy nine months ago. Or no. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Moving on to new business, uh, agenda item number 8A, Alderman Beccarelli, 8A. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the appointment of Sharon Capetta at 137 Ford Street as a member of the Ethics Commission to fill the present vacancy term expiring 12-31-18. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8B. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the appointment of Christopher Bishop at 116 Fifth Ave as an alternate member of the Historic District Commission south of the Green to fill the present vacancy term expiring 1121. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. At this time, uh, we will have our newly confirmed board and commission members come to the front of the auditorium to get sworn in by our city clerk. Raise your right hand. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or sincerely affirm that you will uphold your duties and responsibilities to the best of your ability for your prospective board for the city of Milford, so help you God or under the pain or penalty for perjury or false statement? Okay. Moving on to agenda item 8C, Alderman Vecarelli, 8C. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the attached energy supply and services agreement between the city of Milford and Dunzan Dusan Energy Solutions America Incorporated and to authorize the mayor, the public works director, the city attorney to take all steps necessary, including the signing of all documents to effectuate said agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Sutton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you uh, to the mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I've had the opportunity to review um, the uh, proposed um, supply and service agreement. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, uh, will this result in the savings for the town? What is the financial ramification? Uh, thank you, Alderman Sutton. I'm happy to give you a brief overview, but we do have our public works director here that has more of the details about the contract, as does our city attorney. Uh, this is a power purchase agreement that we may enter into. Again, there's still due diligence that the city attorney's office needs to go through before we sign off on anything. This is for authorization, uh, dependent on that due diligence. But um, the prospective project uh, includes approximately $40,000 a year in electrical savings, plus a separate uh, heating component for one of our wastewater treatment buildings. There is no capital outlay. It is a power purchase agreement. Uh, there will be about a cent and a half uh, less that we pay for each kilowatt hour 
Um, that's the savings over the course of the next 20 years. So uh, that equates to approximately forty to fifty thousand dollars annually in electrical savings. But um, Chris Saley, our public works director, does have more information, more details. Good evening, everyone. If I'm going to pass these out for everyone. Mr. Chairman, while Chris is heading back to the microphone, the other component of this is that it is a more sustainable energy. Uh, this is a fuel cell that is made in the USA, made in Connecticut, actually. And um, it's uh, a type of energy production that increases our you know, sustainable energy so that we're not just relying um, on the grid, that we're relying on a whole host of different providers. And this is one of them. Olivine German. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the Public Works Director. Um, so that penny and a half savings, is that what that 40000 per year equates to? Yes, that's correct. So that penny and a half, okay. And another question, the agreement in here is for 20 years, is that correct? Yes. What would happen after 20 years? Uh, I believe... Sir, yeah, I'm sorry. Come could, on, could you come yourself. up to the microphone, please? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and, and the uh, town alderman. My name is Jerry Conboy. I'm the executive of sales for Doosan Fuel Cells America. Uh, as mentioned, we are uh, headquartered in South Windsor, Connecticut. I will let you know that last week, uh, Waterbury had a ribbon cutting uh, ceremony with uh, Senator Blumenthal for three fuel cells. So they're saving approximately about 155,000 a year because they have three. In your case, you have one and you're not using the full capacity. If you use the full capacity, you'd save about 60,000. Right now, you're using 2.8 million kilowatt hours a year at, at the wastewater treatment plant. The fuel cell's capable of producing four million. So if you go up, you will save still a penny and a half. Every six months, we <clears throat> look at the price from the uh, New York Mercantile Exchange of what is the price of gas, and if the price of gas comes down, we reduce your penny and a half below what the index is for your wastewater treatment plant. So you're guaranteed for the, for the life of the 20 years that you will save a penny and a half. It's a penny and a half off of the commodity price. Today you're buying your, uh, your, your uh, um, electricity from TransCanada. You get it delivered from UI and you, and you get a, uh, a good rate for your commodity and then we will beat that by a penny and a half. Does that answer your question? Yes, and then to follow up on the 20 years after the 20 year agreement, what happened? Ability to take it out. You are not the owner of the equipment. We are the owner of the equipment. We take on all the capital expenditures we provide 20 years service. This is bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage. You do, not, you do not spend any money for this transaction. So there's no payback period. You start your payback the first month you install it. And will this be like obsolete in 20 years, this piece of equipment, or? Well, I, I, guess, I guess that's hard to say, but the point, the point is, is that, that you would still continue to save a penny and a half. There could be something better out there, right, that you could be saving more money. But the truth of the matter is, is, is I'm not sure that the price of electricity is going to be going down over these years. Thank you. All in the back of rally. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I, is, is this fuel cell going to be powered by the um, byproducts of the treatment plant? No, it's, it's, by power, by, by, it's powered by natural gas. And then it produces water as a as a emissions. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Alderman Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate the the cost savings that this is going to bring. But uh, do you have any other numbers on the reduction in CO two emissions that uh, this will bring to the city as well? In the handout I provided to you, we have. Uh, 
the reduction of emissions versus the grid. So, so in, in this handout, I don't have the exact number what it is, but it, uh, I, I can get back to you on it. But in the handout that you have, it shows the reduction of CO2 emissions versus the grid. This is the, 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 you know, no combustion in this. We take natural gas and then uh, what we do is, is create electricity from it. We separate the hydrogen from the oxygen and then we create electricity from that. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Uh, Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Alan. Alderman Vecarelli. Agenda item 8D. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the City of Milford to submit an application for the attached 2018 Distracted Driving High Visibility Enforcement Mobilization Grant and to authorize the mayor, the chief of police, and our city attorney's office to take all steps necessary, including signing all documents to effectuate said grant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, Captain Marsner is here. If there are questions from the board that have to do with the details of the grant, it's a grant that we've gotten in the past. I think what distinguishes it from the years past is that there used to be a 25% buy-in from the city. Uh, this is 100% reimbursement uh, from the state grant. Is there any discussion from any of our board members? Alderman Smith. Yeah, I, I wonder, Captain, if you, just a quick question, because we've, we've um, seen um, Captain, um, who's the other? Alexopoulos, in the last couple of times when this has come up again. Um, is there, in assessing the, effect, the effectiveness of this grant, um, is there any metrics that the police department uses? I mean, obviously not necessarily how many tickets you hand out, but um, in terms of monitoring the success of this, and the, because I, the more and more I drive a car, the more I realize how lethal distracted driving can be. Is there something you guys use to all of, our, that? all of our statistics are gathered and forwarded to the, um, the provider of the grant. I, I don't have anything, any, we do, usually don't get any response from them as far as their success. Is there a way to know the phenomenon of distracted driving? When I say that mainly because it's always been texts, which now they have hands free where you can have a phone conversation, but even worse now is when I see people typing as they're doing Lazy eights down I-95. Um, what what is there in this in terms of the? This is really a, a more of a public education program than it is necessarily an enforcement tool, right? I would say it's it's a, it's both. It's education and enforcement. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more discussion on the board? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8E. Well, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the attached agreement for collection of soft recyclables between the city of Milford and Great Lakes Recycling Incorporating. Simple recycling and to authorize the mayor, public works director, the city attorney to take all steps necessary, including the signing of all documents to effectuate said agreement. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Alderman Anderson. Through you, sir. Um, I'd like to call up the public works director. Evening, Chris. Good evening, Brian. Um, 
it's been mentioned that uh, this particular entity, uh, Soft Recyclables, also known as Great Lakes Recycling, is the successor to um, Winters Brothers. Is that correct? No, actually, this is a this is a different component because it, it's a little misleading with the description. But it's it's really for clothes and, and garments, textiles. Uh, Winter Brothers is still our recycling component or uh, recycling company for our uh, single stream. Thank you. I wanted clarification on that. So, how did we come to find this vendor? Was this through a notification process? Actually, uh, Bill Plantamira, our acting uh, solid waste foreman was at a, a conference and ended up running into a few of these companies that provided these services and we spoke with them and Bill spoke with them and they brought a proposal to us that we thought was very beneficial to the city. Uh, it really, it's, it's where we're trying to go down the road which is really separate our MSW, municipal solid waste. Uh, this is a component where a lot of people throw away their, you know, clothes and it ends up going into the burn plant. So this opportunity takes, takes it, they, they, no cost to the city, there's a small savings not a tremendous savings, but a small savings, and they go to the homeowners and leave bags, and then they come by and pick them up manually. So there's no exposure to the city in any way, shape, or form. It just reduces our MSW costs, and it's good for the environment. I definitely, through you, Mr. Chairman, I definitely see the advantages to having this program in place because we have a number of these items that are ending up in our recycling or waste stream, and uh, we need to be able to capture it um, yes. to make sure that it gets disposed of in a proper place. Where might the operations be for this particular company? Where are they looking to set up in Connecticut? They're a Connecticut-based company. They're actually a point, Bill, would you know? So Manchester and Stanford. And um, again, um, what, what's our level of participation as a municipality or outlay? That's, there's no outlay to us. There's no labor cost to us. They literally take care of everything. They do all the advertising. Um, they interact with the residents. Um, they leave bags and the residents call them if they need more bags. When they use them up, they'll leave extra bags for the residents. So it's really a volunteer situation. Uh, we're hoping the residents buy into it and, and use the system. Follow-up question, Mr. Chairman. So there's a representative here from the company? I don't believe so, no. Oh, okay. Um, do you have detail about what type of bag we're, we're talking about? It's just a, it's a plastic bag, but it has their labeling on it, so it's very distinct. So it's transparent? I don't know if it's transparent, but I know it has a labeling on it, so it's not, no, not going to be a trash bag. Um, but it will be, it could be a, um, a distinctive color that's, yes. okay, yes. all right. And Mr. Chairman, just to follow up, I don't mean to interrupt Al Alderman Anderson, but in no way, shape, or form should this discover residents that want to donate their clothes to the clothes closet or somewhere else, that should be folks's, you know, first go-to. Uh, this is only folks that may instead throw their clothes away into our uh, municipal solid waste stream, uh, that's the option to avoid that. Uh, this contract pays the same amount that we get for our recycling presently, uh, at least until this contract ends in July. Uh, so this is $20 a ton uh, that we get. It's not going to be a lot of money that the city receives. It's going to be a few thousand dollars, but uh, there is some uh, monetary benefit that the city receives for allowing uh, this company to operate uh, in the city. So to follow up, um, there is a list of some of the uh, recyclables that they will take, such as men's, women's, children's clothing, shoes, purses, hats, blankets, drapes, curtains, pillows, rags, sleeping bags, and sewing scraps. Um, when is the exact list going to be available to residents? I believe once we get, if we get your approval, then we'll start that process, we'll advertise, and this company will kind of step in and take care of all that. Thanks, and one last question, Mr. Chairman, with regard to um, any recyclables that they collect that, they, that are deemed to be surplus, that they cannot get rid of. 
do you have a feel for what happens to those items? Are they being distrib redistributed throughout the country, overseas? Uh, yeah, so what, what happened? A, a lot of the uh, worn clothes go overseas. They're first try to sold here as a commodity. And if that commodity doesn't sell, then it goes overseas to other third world countries, the clothes, the shoes, things of that nature. Thanks very much for the detailed information. I appreciate it. It's certainly um, a program that I think residents will welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, welcome. Chris, um, I need a little explanation on the, um, if we approve this agreement, uh, the company will be in contact with the residents on their own? It will work through Public Works, through, through our solid waste form and Bill Plantamera. Uh, and, and we'll start to execute the process. It's probably two or three months before it starts, and we'll advertise. I just, you know, the company will advertise uh, on our website, things of that nature. And on, the, and on their own, they're going to be distributing these bags yes. to the residents on their own. Yes, we don't. We don't touch works, anything. Public Works won't be involved in that at all. That's what's. It's a. It's a very nice benefit. I mean, it's not going to like the mayor was explaining. It's not a huge savings, but it's a nice step in that right direction trying to source separate items that could be reused. I like the idea that uh, it's separate from public works, so yes. it'll probably be picked up on a separate day, so we don't interfere with uh, our uh, trash and our uh, recycling. I would think that would be make sense, yes. Thank you. Alderman Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just have a clarification that I believe you answered uh, with Alderman Anderson. The, the bags will be single-use bags that uh, they'll distribute to the the household and uh, put them out to the curb, the bag and everything will be taken away. They take it with them, yes. Alderman. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Chris. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item 8F. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the request for the attached policy regarding disposition of surplus property, vehicles, equipment, and parts. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in all. Alderman Ginatazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to Director Saley. Mr. Saley, can you just share with us up until this point how this equipment's been handled? Yes. So a, a lot of times when we're trading in a vehicle, we'll trade in some of the vehicles, and, and we get very little money for them, sometimes $100. Uh, we've had a number of people come to us, approach us, and say, you know, we'd be interested in doing that. And we kind of separate it now. So we have our garage foreman that will give an estimate of what we think the vehicle is worth with the parts or just scrapping. And we try to go out and advertise that and say, hey, listen, we think we can get more money for the city uh, for that, as opposed to, you know, returning it or, or trading it in with the, the vendor that we're trading it in with. Will this also um, enable us to get rid of the equipment sooner rather than later? I believe it will. It'll, it'll expedite the process, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion on the motion? Alderman Vitale. Scratching your nose? Okay. Any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Agenda item number nine, there is no new business. Open on agenda item number 10, moving on to budget memo transfers. Alderman Vecarelli, agenda item number 10A. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the budget memo transfers number nine <coughs> and 10, fund 10, FY18. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Vaccarelli, agenda item number 11. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the refunds in the amount of one hundred and eight thousand dollars nine hundred and twenty seven uh, and fifty four cents Second. motion has been made and seconded is there any discussion seeing none all in favor aye opposed
Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item number 12, reports of standing committees. Alderman Frank Smith, agenda item number 12A, report of ordinance committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The ordinance committee met earlier this evening to consider three ordinances regarding compensation of city officials. The first is an ordinance amending an ordinance establishing compensation of city officials and employees in the service of the city of Milford, Article 2, Public Safety Employees, Schedule K. This is for the uh, police chief and the deputy police chief. Um, this is um, in accordance with, uh, this is for those personnel, namely the police chief and deputy, not covered by the collecting bargaining agreement and reflects the, um, the increments that were um, negotiated with the city by the uh, uniformed bargaining agreement. Um, the, um, the ordinance in question was proposed and is, uh, was um, recommended to the full board here with a uh, unanimous, uh, um, unanimous recommendation. And I'd like to submit it, Mr. Chairman, as a motion. I second the motion. Thank you, Alderman Smith. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Frank Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The second um, uh, matter to come up before this, the ordinance committee tonight is an, an ordinance amending an ordinance on compensation of city officials. This is for the registrar of voters. Uh, this is uh, Schedule U4, effective January 1, 2020 through the end of 2020 um, for a, uh, a salary figure of $36,344.35. It should be noted that um, this is, um, again, beyond the next election cycle for the registrars, which falls on even years rather than the municipal officials who are elected in the odd number of years. Um, this was considered by the Ordinance Committee this evening and was unanimously recommended to the full board, and I'd like to make that as a motion, Mr. Chairman. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Alderman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question for the mayor or city attorney. Uh, I note that in Schedule U4, it mentions that the Registrar of Voters uh, would see um, an increase as of January 1, 2020. And uh, we know that they're up for election this year and would take office January 1st of 2019, wondering uh, the difference in um, dates. Mr. Chair, through you to Alderman Anderson, in June of 2016, uh, the last time this ordinance was amended, um, it was an amendment for three years. Um, so it was January 1, 17 to 12, 31, 17, January 1, 18, 12, 31, 18, and January 1, 2019 to 12, 31, 19. So it, it got in that weird space, three years as opposed to two years, in which we address it on non-election years. So this, the proposed ordinance is only for one year to get us back on track. Got it. Thanks very much for the uh, clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Alderman Frank Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And finally, the Ordinance Committee took up a proposed ordinance amending um, a existing ordinance establishing compensation for city officials, in this case, the mayor and the city clerk. Um, this is a schedule of two um, um, pay, uh, pay periods starting November 19th, 2019 um, through November 16th of 2020, and then um, beginning November 17th, 2020 through November 15th, 2021. This is Schedule U1 covering both the mayor and city clerk. And it should be noted, too, that this is uh, beyond the next election cycle, so it does not apply to the current office holders and would apply to uh, the mayor and city clerks as elected in our next election year in November of uh, 2019. This was considered by the Ordinance Committee and was unanimously recommended to the full board here tonight 
and I'd like to uh, submit that as a motion. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Are there any other standing committee reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number 13, reports for any special committees. Any special committee reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number 14. The next item on the agenda is the executive session. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss 14A, consideration of settlement of 266 Broad Street versus City of Milford regarding 266 Broad Street. Item 14B, consideration of settlement of 523 Wheeler's Farms Road versus City of Milford regarding 523 Wheeler's Farms Road. Item 14C, consideration of settlement of Brian McLaughlin versus City of Milford regarding 315 Old Gate Lane. In the last one, 14D, consideration of settlement of Costco Wholesale Corporation versus City of Milford regarding 1718 Boston Post Road. Joining us in executive session for item 14A and 14D will be the mayor and city attorney John Bertram and assessor Dan Thomas. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to go in executive session. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're in executive session. Thank you.